With so many actors trying to make it big, the chance of becoming a known name with a generous filmography are slight. Even after obtaining such fame, not all actors are able to maintain an exceptional career. A single film can ruin it all. Here are 10 famous actors whose careers were ruined by one movie. Mike Myers and the Love Guru Mike Myers first cracked up audiences on Saturday Night Live, a show with a reputation of churning out some of the most hilarious comedians from the last four decades. He was able to adapt his SNL character Wayne Campbell for the feature film Wayne's World, cementing himself as a film star. After Wayne's World and its sequel, the talented Canadian made Austin Powers' International Man of Mystery, a sleeper hit that built a massive audience once it was released on video. Two sequels followed with varying success, and Myers branched out to more family-friendly fare with Shrek. The funny man's good luck streak came to a screeching halt with The Love Guru, the disastrous so-called comedy was worse than just being offensive. It also wasn't funny. Watching Myers desperately recycle old jokes and voices made audiences a bit queasy. After a decade of being at the top of his game, the love guru was a loser that he has yet to come back from. Brendan Fraser in Monkey Bone Where did it all go wrong with Brendan Fraser? He was young, handsome, and talented, with memorable turns in comedies like Airheads and Encino Man, and dramas like School Ties and With Honors. He even got into the action-adventure game with the Mummy franchise. While 1997's George of the Jungle was a slight embarrassment, it only opened up the possibility for family-friendly films like Dudley Do-Right. Though it seemed his varied genres were a benefit to him, it was the one-two punch of 2000's Bedazzled and 2001's Monkey Bone that ruined his fantastic trajectory. Both films exposed Frasier's goofy side far more than necessary, and the films themselves were just not good enough. Frasier continues to work regularly, but has not since made a film that compares to his past winners. Kevin Costner in Waterworld There was a time when Kevin Costner held an impressively high spot on the A-list. With films like Field of Dreams and Bull Durham, he was the likable guy with the endearing smile that made women swoon. In the early 90s, it seemed his hot career was scorching with The Bodyguard. His directorial effort for 1991's Dances with Wolves earned him countless accolades. 1995's Waterworld was the only thing that could trip Costner up in his winning streak. The big-budget film was costly and embarrassing for the studio. In the two decades that followed, Costner has made few decent flicks. Instead, he is relegated to underwhelming films that he manages to make a bit shinier than they deserve. John Travolta in Battlefield Earth John Travolta has not always had a smooth acting career. After the classic musical Grease and playing the slick-moved Tony Monero in Saturday Night Fever, Travolta became a household name. The 1980s were a quiet time, but the beginning of the 90s provided a decent role as Kirstie Alley's paramour in the Look Who's Talking films. However, it was Quentin Tarantino's 1994 film Pulp Fiction that sparked an official comeback. His role as a loquacious hitman reminded audiences of his charming presence. He quickly began releasing film after film of solid work in the 1990s, playing a lunatic in Broken Arrow to an angel in Michael. The Scientology-based film Battlefield Earth caused Travolta's career to veer off the rails. The film about an alien planet just ended up alienating film fans. While Travolta still works occasionally, his name and films have been tarnished by the big-budget disaster. Halle Berry in Catwoman Halle Berry was a popular working actor in the 1990s, not because of her stellar acting ability, but because of her stunning appearance and ease on camera. It seems her name was more recognizable than many of the movies she was in. Either way, she still delivered solid performances in even the most average films. There was no question about her skills after 2001's Monster's Ball. Her critically lauded performance earned her an Academy Award and industry cred. Then came Catwoman. Today, comic-based films carry high expectations for quality, but in 2004, along with Daredevil in 2003, filmmakers dropped the ball with beloved characters. The ridiculous film caused many to believe that Barry's trophy-winning prior work was just a fluke. Jake Lloyd in The Phantom Menace Jake Lloyd's name may be familiar to Star Wars fans, but to everyone else, he was never able to build a solid enough career to become a big name in Hollywood. After scoring one of the most sought-after roles, Anakin Skywalker, it would seem that the child actor was just beginning a promising career. Rather than exploding on the scene with a big-budget box office hit, Lloyd's performance was highly scrutinized, giving him little opportunity to prove himself in other films. For Jake Lloyd, it was a case of too much too soon, as The Phantom Menace ended a career right at its beginning. Cuba Gooding Jr. in Boat Trip John Singleton's 1991 drama Boys in the Hood introduced audiences to the perils of living in the gang-infested South Central. It also introduced Cuba Gooding Jr. He hit even bigger success a few years later in 1996's Jerry Maguire, a film that lent him the unforgettable line, Show me the money. His role as football player Rod Tidwell highlighted Gooding Jr.'s unending likability and talent. After winning an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor, his choices expanded exponentially. With a few decent films like Medal of Honor and Radio, he made a major misstep with Boat Trip. The 
progressive film about a guy who goes on a gay cruise was not just a terrible film, it was a sad moment in Gooding Jr.'s career that had grown sketchy leading up to it. The movie ultimately left a lasting bad taste in audiences' mouths. See Thomas Howell in Soul Man. There are some actors whose careers warm up in the 80s and only get hotter. Then there are actors who disappear into obscurity. C. Thomas Howell was one of the unlucky 80s stars who made such a poor film choice that he was given little room to grow. After playing Pony Boy in the film adaptation of The Outsiders, he went on to star in the killer ensemble film Red Dawn. It was 1986's Soul Man that not only ruined his potentially long-lasting career, it left audiences wondering how the film was greenlit in the first place. The premise of the film involves a white student sporting blackface to earn a scholarship for African-American students. It is hard to clearly state whether Soul Man was the sole reason for C. Thomas Howell's ruined career, but it certainly didn't help. Alicia Silverstone in Excess Baggage After appearing in three music videos for Aerosmith, it was hard not to fall in love with Alicia Silverstone. The bubbly blonde teen was beautiful, yet had devilish eyes that aided her villainous role in The Crush. Her performance as the filthy rich but incredibly sweet Cher Horowitz in 1995's Clueless catapulted her to instant mainstream star. After the overwhelming success of Clueless, all eyes were on Silverstone's next career move. After a short hiatus, Silverstone returned with two films in 1997, Batman and Robin and Excess Baggage. While the superhero flick was was ridiculed plenty. It was excess baggage that took the largest jab at her career. The mediocre film was made worse with Silverstone's constant high-pitched whine, something she avoided in the past. Though she was able to obtain a lead role in the 1999 underrated comedy Blast from the Past, she has been unable to recapture her same level of fame. Demi Moore in Striptease Ever since 1985's St. Elmo's Fire, Demi Moore was a notable star. Her full wattage power only grew brighter in the following decade, with roles in A Few Good Men, Disclosure, and the too hanky tearjerker Ghost. With her raspy voice, silky black hair, and enviable acting skills, Demi Moore became a bankable star who could do no wrong. Unfortunately, the film Striptease proved she actually could do wrong. Her role as a single mother who takes a job as a stripper seemed beneath such a famous and serious actress, but she was committed. Possibly hoping that undressing may lead to Oscar gold, Moore even went under the knife for breast enhancements prior to filming. Ever since Striptease, Moore has not been able to regain the momentum of her prior success. What do you think of our list? Who did we forget? Let us know in the comments and be sure to subscribe to our channel to watch more great videos like this one. Thanks for watching!